joined by Heather Wilson and Jennifer Bugner. They're both volunteers with the BCHS Foundation here in Brant. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having us, Patty. Now you have a special fundraiser coming up. Uh, Heather, do you wanna talk about it? Sure. So Jennifer and I are both educators and we're also avid volunteers with the Brant Community Healthcare System Foundation. Over the past six weeks, we've had a lot of conversation and interest from community members looking for ways to support and help frontline and essential healthcare workers. So together we came up with the idea that the best way to do this and the simplest way to do this is by creating something online. So we have created an online readathon. So reading for healthcare or Brant Reads for BCHS. Now, Jennifer, how can people participate in this? All right, so everyone can find us on a social media page. We have a Facebook page, Instagram page, and Twitter. You can find us at the hashtag read4bchs, and it will take us to your, our link at the uh, Canada Help Org um, website, and you just sign up, and you just need to read and raise money for the local health care. Now, both of you being educators and your schools is closed right now. Why is it important for children and even adults to continue reading, uh, especially during a time like this? Well, Patty, it's, it's funny because I've seen lots of quotes on social media from multiple people and I think it's so true. Reading takes you to places when you can't go anywhere. So it lets you really, lets your imagination run wild. We've, we've seen lots of overwhelmed parents with online learning. We've seen teachers who are working around the clock trying to provide opportunities and support for kids at home and they're frustrated and challenged. And so reading is something that we all benefit from. We know it's good for our mental health. We know it builds our baby's brains. So it's something everyone can do. It doesn't discriminate. It allows from birth, a, a baby can read on their mother or father's lap. And my 93 year old Nana still enjoys picking up a good book and having a good read. So it really is an inclusive activity that we can all participate in and we can all make um, a difference in our own community and support our healthcare system while we're doing it. And so where would the fund raise, funds raise, what would it go toward? So right now the funds raised would go towards the foundation and where the essential needs and priorities on our equipment priorities list would be. So certainly that's reviewed daily by the foundation staff and the hospital teams, uh, senior administration teams to prioritize what needs to happen. And, you know, with COVID-19, as for everyone, it, it's completely turned our worlds upside down. So we have to look at it from a priority uh, standpoint and see where those dollars are best attributed towards. So how can people help uh, share the message, spread the word? Are you looking to link up with, with local teachers? What's the plan to get the word out? So we hope to link with the local teachers, all the school boards, um, anyone in our community that is willing to support in any kind of way. We really want to get the children reading and raising money and becoming community helpers to uh, help the healthcare workers right now. And so just before we, we wrap up, if there's one book that you could recommend for parents to oh. read to their kids from each of you, just one or two, <laughs> uh, what would it be? Oh, we have so many. Let me see. Uh, a favorite of ours in our house when the kids were really little was uh, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? Another favorite here is um, a long time ago was um, Night Night Construction Site and oh, A Little Blue Truck. Oh, there's so many that I would recommend, but those are definitely some of their favorites in our house. I know around here when our boys were little, and Jennifer, you say a long time ago, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> we loved Good Night Moon by Margaret Wise Brown. That was a bedtime favorite, and uh, I still have the hard, the hard copy book that we used. Um, but you know what? This isn't just for children. Don't forget, we have some amazing Canadian authors, Margaret Atwood. I mean, as a teenage girl, I loved Ellen Montgomery's Anne of Green Gables. I've certainly been inspired as of late by Michelle Obama and Melinda Gates. So this, like the sky's the limit. Pick up your genre, pick up your authors, pick up whatever you love and uh, 
Put your nose to your books, people. And so where can people go again for more information and to sign up? So you can certainly check out the BCHS Foundation website. Take a look at for us on um, Facebook. So our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter is, um, oh, Jennifer, help remind me. <laughs> Read for BCHS. Correct. Perfect. Um, yeah, and they all provide you with the link to Canada Helps. And, and last resort, if you can't find any of those, you're welcome to log on to Canada's Help, canadahelp.org and search us out through that. Perfect. Thank you for joining me today and good luck with the readathon. Thanks, Patty. Thanks, Patty.